Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for coming to this session, uh, managing and uh, distributing uh, AI models using OCS standards and uh, Harbor. Uh, I'm Stephen Zhou. I'm a software engineer from uh, VMware by Broadcom. I'm also a maintainer of a Harbor project. Actually, we have a co-speaker because some reason he cannot come here, so today only me uh, to deliver this uh, session. Uh, to move to next slide, I'd like to do a very quick survey. Uh, how many uh, of you are here are working on AI-related fields? You can. Oh, cool, quite a lot. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can get more feedback from you. And uh, another, how many of you uh, here today are familiar with Harbor? Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I think it's so many Harbor fans. Okay. Uh, the topic of this uh, of this talk is in a word. It's uh, uh, Harbor can be used as a, not only as a container registry to support uh, uh, deploying containerized workloads on Kubernetes. It can also uh, serve as a fully featured uh, uh, model registry to support AI workflows on Kubernetes. Here is the agenda for today's presentation. First, I will briefly discuss the motivations behind this idea, and then. I will uh, uh, cover some background, focus on the, what's the OCI and uh, what Harbor can do. Uh, next, I will introduce the overall idea of a model registry. Uh, after that, uh, we'll go through how this idea can be imp implemented in, uh, within Harbor. Uh, following that, uh, I will present an uh, end-to-end uh, demo, uh, illustrates the AI model scenario. Uh, finally, we will uh, wrap up with uh, discussion on potential future directions. Okay, uh, Kubernetes, yeah, has evolved over the last uh, 10 years uh, into the de facto platform for authentication uh, containerized workloads with the container registry as a backbone uh, for managing these flows. Uh, with AI on the rise, uh, Kubernetes is uh, uh, increasing uh, the platform of choice for AI uh, workloads like training efforts and AI-driven applications. So these workflows require not only uh, code, but also models and uh, data sites as core assets. So the question is how can we um, manage these AI assets uh, within the Kubernetes ecosystem reusing existing proven uh, tools? The community is uh, already take, uh, taking actions Kubernetes 1.31 now supports uh, OCI compatible artifacts as image volumes, uh, providing a way to integrate uh, models uh, and the data sets and OCI artifacts uh, in container registry. Um, extending container registry uh, to AI model uh, registry that uh, fits seamlessly uh, into Kubernetes will bring uh, obvious uh, benefits. Many organizations already run Kubernetes uh, and OCI compatible registry. So using OCI for models means the same ecosystem can handle AI workload, uh, workloads alongside traditional applications. Uh, this compatibility can also be extended to authentication, right? Uh, where AI models can be deployed and managed within Kubernetes just like uh, containerized applications. So another motivation is the we think of private AI model registry service, maybe a harder requirement in future. Uh, this is driven by some uh, key considerations. The first is, is IP protection, right? AI models are become critical IP, IP assets. To safeguard their IP assets, private AI model uh, registry offers the best choice for security and uh, exclusivity. Security and uh, compliance Given the increasing uh, demand for model registry and uh, regularly uh, complex, private uh, management uh, offers stronger uh, safeguards to meet uh, these needs. And another is uh, performance. Yeah, models always involve the large size data. Distributing uh, them efficiently uh, benefits from the internal, uh, internal networks, uh, which can optimize uh, performance. Uh, cost efficiency. Managing models on a private platform uh, bring you know better cost efficiency, reduce reliance on external service, and uh, another last one is a uh, smooth integration. A private platform allows for deeper integration with your enterprise systems, uh, enhancing collaboration and uh, functionality. 
OK. Now I'd like to share some uh, background. Uh, the first one is uh, the OCI SPIC. The OCI Open Container Initiative uh, SPIC defends a standard, standard platform nature format for container image. Now extended to other uh, consumable uh, artifacts like uh, Hammer Charts, uh, CNA Bundle, and uh, so on. Uh, ensuring uh, compatibility and uh, consistency across container runtimes and uh, registries. So the primary structure defined by the spec includes a manifest, uh, which is a JSON documentation, uh, document uh, listing the image uh, layers, configuration, and the reference to other components along with other digits. And a configure uh, file, a JSON file containing metadata about uh, the container such as the environment variable architecture and OS describing how the image can run. Um, Layers, a set of compre uh, compressed uh, files, typically some tuples, right, uh, representing the first system layers of the artifact. Each layer is uh, uh, content addressed by unique digest, uh, ensuring uh, immutability. Uh, OCS back is uh, foundational and uh, highly flexible and easily extensible uh, standard that can be uh, customized to fit the structure and the needs of different artifacts. It works uh, well for AI models and also brings some uh, more uh, benefits. Okay, another thing uh, I want to share is Harbor, Harbor CNCF uh, Graduate uh, Project Open Source Trusted Cloud Native Registry. And uh, it stores, distributes, sends, and scans OCI compliant, uh, compliant artifacts. Actually, Harbor already provides the mainly capability for OCI compliant artifacts, supporting uh, like uh, various use cases like multi tenants access control, uh, garbage collection, security scanning policy based uh, replication, and so on. A lot of uh, features. Uh, landing OCI compliant AI models uh, to Harbor is a good choice. Uh, that avoiding uh, avoids reinventing the wheel. Additional harbor is already integrated into uh, many existing container orchestration uh, platform and uh, uh, two chains through harbor. The, uh, the capabilities uh, for managing and uh, distributing AI models can be seamlessly, sim seamlessly incorporated into existing ecosystem, right? Aiming to achieve consistency in uh, two, uh, two chains and uh, uh, user experience. Okay. Uh, actually, Harbor has a long history to start the AI model uh, journey, uh, as shown in the screenshot, as early as 2020, uh, since four years ago, there was a, pro a proposal submitted to the Harbor community to enhance Harbor for management of customer AI uh, and machine learning uh, model artifacts. Uh, customization is primarily achieved by uh, using OCS spec annotations to store additional model feature information and uh, introducing a uh, specific uh, media type to tag a different layer uh, files. As the OCI complete registry, Harper can unanimously support OCI artifacts. However, to enable more scenarios and uh, capabilities, a uh, Harper registry needed additional uh, metadata about the OCI artifacts to populate uh, uh, into Harper's object model in, the, in its database. So the artifact metadata processor is designed uh, for this purpose and uh, provide default support uh, for built-in artifact types such as um, container image, hammer chart, and the CNAB bundle. This uh, community proposal aims to support uh, customer models like AI and uh, machine learning models by enhancing the default processor uh, ability to handle data uh, in the form of annotation within the artifact uh, spike. Uh, this uh, approach is still applicable today, and uh, this partition uh, essentially follows this path to move forward. Okay, uh, let's go uh, through the overall idea of the model registry. Uh, let's look at the main approach starting with the build and the push. Uh, for the raw model files, use the OCI client library to package uh, these files uh, with necessary metadata uh, into a standard OI, uh, OCI model artifact, following a model uh, specification built on top of OCI uh, standard. To leverage 
the benefits of multiple layer support such as parallel pool, poolings and incremental updates, uh, each model fair can be you know, uh, packaged as an individual uh, layer. We'll go over the specifics of this model spec in an upper uh, slide, uh, upcoming slide. Uh, once the AI model artifact is built and uh, pushed to the OCI complete hub registry, features like uh, adjustment multi tenants, access control and versioning management uh, automatic, automatically uh, applied, uh, making it easy to manage and secure model uh, artifacts. Additionally, this process is also applicable to the data site uh, files uh, needed for model training. Okay. The ultimate goal of you know, effective managing model is, is using it, right? So this is the pool and the consume uh, scenario in Kubernetes environment, as so it's version 1.31. We can leverage the image uh, volume feature to directly mount the model artifact into a, a, a job or pull the container. This allows uh, the container runtime of Kubernetes to pull the model uh, artifacts from the registry just like a container image and extracting the model uh, layers into the container's uh, uh, mount pass at the runtime. The training or inference code that can easily access these models or data, data set files. Actually, in non-Kubernetes environment, you can also use some OCI client to pull the model artifacts from the registry and extract uh, the model files into a specific uh, path or location for further access. Okay, this is uh, the OCI spec just uh, providing, you know, uh, this is the model spec I just mentioned. The OCI spec just provides the basic rules for uh, it. it uh, accessibility and uh, standards. However, to make it suitable for AI models and uh, their specific, uh, specific needs, a specialized definition is required on top of the OCS standard. So what I'm uh, sharing here is the model spec version 1. Uh, the core idea of this spec is to introduce a new artifact type, right? It's the vnd.cncf.cnai.model and uh, uh, to specifically identify AI model artifacts, it uses the OCS uh, manifest and the layer annotations uh, to create a set of customer, customer attributes, uh, some dedicated annotation case for you for AI model uh, uh, for hard for hardening AI model uh, metadata, uh, making it easier easier for system to read. For example. Uh, what's the architecture of your model? What's the family of, the, of your model? What's the format of your model? And uh, what's the parameter size of your model? And uh, what, for the layer part, uh, is this layer a readme fair? Is this layer a config, just a config fair? Or is this layer the model fair? So you can use uh, add some annotation uh, to, uh, to the uh, current uh, uh, property. Uh, this approach keeps the specification simple. You can see it's just an interest some annotations uh, where it remains extensible for future, uh, future needs. Uh, as a side note, uh, some aspects of uh, interacting with the container runtime will be uh, considered in the future uh, version 2 spec. Uh, the model specification is current, uh, currently uh, still under public discussion and uh, has already attracted uh, participation from teams such as Ant Group, Microsoft, Red Hat, Harbor, and more. If you are interested in joining this discussion, you can participate in the model dash spec dash discussion. That's a, it's a Slack channel on the CSF workspace. Welcome to uh, for the discussion. Okay. Uh, here is a high level design diagram describing how to uh, let the idea into Harbor. Okay, it's clear and simple. Uh, Harbor itself, I just mentioned, is an OCN compatible uh, compliant uh, registry. So it can natively store, push, and pull any OCN compliant, uh, compliant uh, artifacts, including the AI uh, model artifact we, we, we defend today, right? Harbor's existing capabilities, such as the multi tenants access control and versioning, can also be directly applied to the AI model. This is why Harbor's overall architecture remains a large unchanged. And uh, however, since our AI model spec uh, defines uh, AI-specific metadata, 
uh, on top of the OCS data. So we still need to make some changes to fully support the model spec. Uh, let's uh, quickly walk through the highlight changes in the green box. In Harbor Core, we introduced a new metadata processor uh, to extract the AI model specific metadata into Harbor database, enabling enhanced use cases uh, such as supporting a more uh, policy control scenarios, uh, enhancing a more comprehensive query capabilities, and uh, a richer uh, UI views. Uh, the UI itself has also been enhanced to show the AI model specific uh, information. Uh, to simplify the access to AI models, we added uh, a replication adapter uh, to the hugging phase, uh, uh, a well known upstream model registry, so allowing a rapid distribution and a copying of the model between upstream and downstream. Uh, additionally, features like uh, uh, signing models for integrity and uh, Preheating models for faster distribution and fully compatible with these OCI compliant uh, uh, models. Okay, here are a little more details of a back, uh, backend change. As mentioned in the high level design, uh, enhancements to Harbor Core are needed to recognize specific artifact types and the metadata for AI model uh, defend the various annotations. So, this change is fairly straightforward. Harbor already has a uh, a uh, standard uh, uh, interface for metadata uh, processing, so allowing for different uh, implementation as needed. Here we introduce the AI model process, especially to handle artifacts uh, building according to the AI model specification version one. Uh, since the default processor has can handle annotation data of OCI artifacts, so the AI model processor uh, uh, leverages this existing capability. So these two processors have some overlap, and uh, this is the. Uh, uh, a specific UI for the uh, uh, AI model to better showcase multiple uh, model specific data. We will uh, introduce some UI enhancements alongside the common details like a model name and the reference, uh, key metadata of the AI model like a family architecture format, uh, precision, uh, and so on are highlighted at the labels. And this UI also displays the uh, uh, model description, list all the uh, available version tags and uh, list uh, other customer metadata as key value pairs and list uh, the files contained in this model and also renders the readme content for users to easily uh, learn uh, what the uh, model is, what's the model. Such UI changes make it easy to get a complete uh, overview of each mode. Okay. Uh, here's a brief summary about uh, what features are applicable to AI models in Harbor Model Registry. This features different AI model management from other model uh, storage mechanism and uh, represents the AI model uh, management uh, uh, capability many users expect. Right? Uh, since AI uh, models are also compatible, so the image volume feature is uh, seamlessly supported. Then the multi tenants based on Harbor projects allowing for secure and uh, isolate uh, management of models across different user and teams. And the versioning, tag your model to check different versions, access control, right? Model are uh, accessed with proper permission and adhere to pooling policies, ensuring only legal operation can be performed. Signature, uh, signing the model to maintain integrity and ensure they haven't uh, been temp tem uh, temper tempered with. And the uh, replication. Uh, models can be uh, transferred among OCI compatible registry where uh, replication enables smooth uh, sharing and uh, distrib distribution. Uh, retention, set the policy to clean out of the data version, helping optimize storage uh, usage, P2P preheat, preheating models into the P2P network, speed up distribution, reduce latency during access, uh, GC, uh, remove unnecessary blob to free up storage and prevent uh, uh, quarter uh, uh, overflow. And audit, track every access of a model to ensure legal operations and uh, uh, compliance. Uh, quarter control cost efficiently and uh, prevent the resource running uh, out by enforcing storage and uh, usage limits. Okay, now it's uh, time uh, for the demo. Uh, let me quickly walk, uh, walk you through the overall demo environment. We've set up a virtual machine on GCP and deploy a harbor with the change we just discussed here. Additionally, we will provision a GKE cluster running with version 1.31 with CRIO runtime and GPU resources, which will be used to for running a fine-tuning model job. 
Uh, on the development machine, we also compared a uh, custom uh, model CRI tool. It's a uh, it's a uh, experimental uh, CRI. It's called uh, model CTL, which is used to package model or data set data set files as uh, OCI artifacts that uh, compliant with the model spec version one we just uh, uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, the demo contains two parts. The first part uh, is a build push. Right, we will uh, replicate the base model from the upstream hugging phase uh, repository into Harbor using model C CTL, CLI, and uh, we will also wrap the data set uh, required for fine tuning uh, job as OCI artifact and push it to Harbor. Then we will create a Kubernetes job to run the fine tuning process. Uh, the fine tuning code image will pull from Harbor where the base model and the data set will be mounted into the container as image volume. Everything will be from Harbor registry. Starting. Okay, so let's start the first part, build and uh, uh, push. So this is Harper. We have a uh, uh, login, and uh, currently in the project library, there is nothing. Uh, ha there is nothing. So first, let's go to the registry, create a hugging face endpoint. You just need to select the hugging face provider and give a name. And uh, also uh, paste uh, your uh, API key into the secret part. Yeah, test connection. Yeah, it's connected. The endpoint is uh, okay. It's healthy. So let's back to the uh, replication. Yeah, we need to create a replication role, give a name, and uh, yeah, select uh, the mode, uh, mode is pull mode, and uh, select the, the target registry endpoint we just created is the hugging face, and uh, uh, provide the source model you want to replicate into Harbor, and uh, give the target uh, model path here. We put it into the uh, library project now. And uh, save it. Okay, after the replication row is created, let's you know, manually trigger it. Yeah, the replication will uh, start to uh, copy the uh, model from hugging face and uh, put it into uh, the current harbor. Yeah, if you want to learn the uh, details of the progress of the replication progress, you can click the uh, log icon to see what happened at the uh, back end. Depends on the size of the model, uh, we need to wait for uh, some time. So for model model is very big, so you may need to wait for a longer time. Yeah, after some time, the replication is completed, back to the project. Okay, there is a, a Llama 2 model replicated, and uh, this is the version, this is the day. Digest to reference to your model and uh, you can uh, click it to open the uh, detailed view, uh, everything related to the uh, model like family architecture, format, everything, you know, it's for you to learn what the model is highlighted as labels. And uh, yeah, there the tags show the current version of the model and uh, there there are some other customers uh, annotation uh, is also showing the uh, overview part and uh, the readme for you to learn uh, what you can use the model. And uh, the most important part will show all the fair lists here contained in this model.
Yeah, of course, you can uh, push your uh, new version of your model, and also you can directly, you know, create some text for you to easily reference your uh, model. Okay, next part. Because to run a fine tuning uh, of job, we also need some data sets. So here I just want to show uh, we will use the CLI we call model CTL to wrapper the data set file as an OCI model uh, file, a uh, model artifact. Yeah, that's uh, the model file, and we need to create a DS, uh, your model file. It's something like a Docker file to define your model structure. And uh, the CR will follow this uh, model fair to wrap uh, the real raw fair as a, as a model artifact. So this is a data we call the model CTR build, and uh, it will wrap the data set into the model. And then we can uh, log into the uh, Harbor model registry, use your username or password. After login succeed, we can directly push it like a Docker push. Yeah, model CTR push your uh, model fair. Actually, this model fair is uh, containing the data set. Okay, so you can see the fair is already in the uh, Harbor registry. So next part, let's uh, show how to pull and consume uh, these model fairs. So we create, uh, we, we, we wrap our uh, Fantune uh, script into a container image and including the related dependence uh, library. And then we create a, a Fantune job. You can see in the job we uh, define two uh, image, uh, image volume and uh, they are reference to the uh, artifact in Harbor Registry. One is the data setter, one is the model. And uh, this image volume will mount into the container as uh, you know different parts. The model will mount into the model parts, and the data will in, uh, mount into the uh, data parts. Then the container, uh, the the, the fine-tuning code can directly ac access the model and the data set file from the parts. We also create an output model uh, folder. This is for the fine-tuned uh, model after the job is completed. So let's uh, start the job. Yeah, it started. And uh, we can get some information from the logs. OK, actually, the Fantune process is started. And uh, at this time, let's get into the container to see uh, what's, the, what's the situation there. So we jump into the container and uh, let's say under the stash data folder, there's the data set file is already mounted there. And the let's let, uh, under the model uh, folder, you can see all the model file is already uh, pulled and extracted into there. So currently the output model folder is empty. We wait for some time to let uh, the uh, fine tuning process complete. So I'll show uh, what's the progress. So let's uh, check the log again after it's completed. Yeah, uh, you can see from the log. So the 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 the, the training code will load the data set from yeah the mount pass loading the model from the. Uh, model pass and start the uh, work. Before starting the work, we do some testing. We ask uh, the model uh, some uh, question in Chinese, but the model does not support that capability. So the model cannot give uh, some answer uh, in Chinese. So we started the fine tuning uh, uh, process. Yeah, after the, the work is done, then we retest uh, the fine tuned model and the uh, uh, 
propose the same question to the model. Now uh, the model can give us the answers uh, in Chinese. Yeah, no, the model support the new capability after uh, fine tuned with the data set. So after the model is, is, is fine tuned, and uh, we also create a model file to describe uh, this model, and uh, we want to wrap it as a new model artifact and push back, push it back to the Harbor uh, model registry. For easy for easy measurement, okay. So we create a model fair. There is something like a doc fair. You there are some keywords for you to add some metadata and specify the model fair and uh, run the model CTR build. It will wrap everything uh, into a model uh, artifact follow the model spec version one. And then we can push back to the artifact uh, registry, to the uh, harbor model registry. And just uh, back to the UI, refresh the project, it will be there. OK, this is the demo. And uh, uh, what's next? So what direction can we continue to explore in the future? Here are some potential uh, interesting ones. The first is the security and the compliance. Harbor has a pluggable. Uh, scanner framework that allows to integrate with third-party scanners, so integrate AI fair scanner to support vulnerability scanning and uh, license checking in future will be a good point. Another is the dependency management, uh, managing uh, dependency between models and other resources like its data set, its container image, to facilitate uh, smooth deployment based on the artifact accessory mechanism will be uh, another good pass. Uh, next is the search and the discover. So enhance our API to allow for tagging and uh, uh, categorizing models by type, uh, by architecture, uh, by different metadata. Uh, so make it easier to discover and uh, organize the models uh, across teams, right? And also Replication Plus, uh, we implement uh, by theoretical replication with upstream uh, model registry to support the scenario of publishing the ready model to the, uh, to the upstream uh, registry, like a hugging face. Currently, we only can pull in from a hugging face. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Any question here? Uh, I'm a little bit biased because uh, we actually have an open source project called uh, GitHub style ML, and it actually does this without Harvard, but with any OCI registry. Yeah. Uh, so, but like, do you foresee uh, something like OPA to be built on top of this? Like, I, I love the vision. We pr practically do the same thing. Uh, like, do you see foresee something like an OPA where? you're actually utilizing this uh, infrastructure to make decisions on deployments? Uh, yeah, frankly speaking, I think uh, currently it's still an experimental idea and uh, to really support and, uh, you know, landing it in production. I think there are a lot of challenge ahead of us. So currently I'm not sure. <laughs> I cannot give you some confirmation. We have some people who are using it for their production workloads uh, on the GitHub ML side, but like one of the things that always comes to us as well is, like, can we actually do something OPA like this with this? But it's early days. Yeah. Well, well we're not. We're like we're six, eight months old as well uh, as an open source project. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. It's a, it's a late, a lot of challenge there. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, so there is a group I just mentioned. Maybe you can join that group. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool.